All right. Time to watch season two of Tig Old Biddies. <coughs> what? Region locked. Ho, ho, ho. You mess with the wrong evil demon mascot thing. Sumi, where are you going? Greedy streaming sites think they can stop me from watching sexy anime? Well, I'll show them about that. Okay, but before you commit another act of war, have you tried using a VPN? A what now? A VPN, just like today's sponsor. This video has been brought to you by NordVPN, one of the highest recommended virtual privacy networks to date. If there's an anime you've been wanting to watch, but it's unavailable in your country, NordVPN is there to help. Not only can you sign in to 59 countries, but you'll have access to 5,200 incredibly fast servers. Just log in, select a country, and Netflix will be none the wiser. Your privacy is incredibly secured with their double data encryption, and you'll be protected while using your phone or computer on the go. So if you go to nordvpn.com slash anime America or use the coupon code Anime America, you can get 70% off of a two-year subscription plan, and they're throwing in an additional month for free. I've used their service for a few years with no complaints, it's highly recommended from top tech experts, and has won several awards including being the best VPN service of 2020. But they have an amazing 24-7 customer service line in case you run into any difficulties. And at the end of the day, if you're not satisfied with their service in the first 30 days, you can always get your money back guaranteed. If you want the best virtual protection the internet has to offer and watch regionally locked anime in different countries, just go to nordvpn.com slash animeamerica or use the coupon code animeamerica to get 70% off of a two-year plan plus one month free with NordVPN. Details are in the description box down below. Thanks, NordVPN. Now I can watch whatever I want and not resort to acts of war. For now. Insert line over how bad 2020 was. I mean, I've said it enough. 2020 was rough with everything that happened throughout the year. There was even a lot of anime titles pushed back due to heavy COVID-19 regulations in order to decrease Japan's case numbers. That's basically why the summer lineup nearly had nothing, while the fall lineup felt twice as big. Nevertheless, I'm grateful to the studios who did their best to create these shows, despite the circumstances. It's bad enough that they're overworked to the point we're dying from exhaustion is common nowadays. Oi. But now they have to do their jobs in the middle of a pandemic. I can only imagine. So I, for one, want to give my biggest form of gratitude to the animators who did their best to keep giving the world incredible works of art that ultimately helped us get through these troubling times. And yet, I'm not sure if I can say the same to the producers and studio directors, because the majority of 2020 anime was a resounding... Meh. Okay, so in the past, my main issue when it came to the anime awards was facing up against the hype. Some shows got so popular that they just buried over other titles that were just as deserving of attention. My main issue this year was finding decent contenders for every category. Not only was the year chock full of fantasy titles, either being an isekai or a mobile game adaption because we can't get enough of those, but a good chunk of other shows just didn't feel that special to me. Seriously, did 2020 make me even more cynical than before? Probably. Or were the majority of 2020 anime just mediocre? I mean, a lot of them are harmless, but nothing that special if you get what I'm saying. Hell, I even had to remove one category from last year. Best adventure? Was there any? And the answer is yes, but the real question is, was it good? So for the Anime Awards this year, I'm gonna edit this a bit differently. Instead of my usual format, I'll present each category casually while ranting about what went through my head while making these choices. 2020 did this to me and y'all need to know how I suffered. But before we get started, here's a lovely video message from Laura Pavlovic, who decided to help me yet again with the Anime Awards. Greetings, Anime America fam! Laura here, and while it is true that 2020 was not our best year, in fact, it downright sucked. We were lucky enough to find at least a handful of anime gems to help us all survive this hellish year. So let's hurry and get over the old so we can get into the new. And thanks again for letting me be a jerk on the panel this year, Robin. Back to you. Ah, uh, thanks again, Laura, for all of your help. With all of that said, let's do this. As always, we start off with our fan favorite, so let's see what we got. The fifth fan favorite anime was Jujutsu Kaisen. Followed by Keep Your Hands Off A Zoken. Then, My Next Life as a Villainess. 
and Brand New Animal. But the one show that grabbed the most amount of votes and landed at number one is... I mean, I only have one thing to say to you all. I'm so proud of you guys. It felt like this year I had my practical and dreamy personas arguing in my head. Again, even though this was the one year full of mediocre shows, I still couldn't choose between two of them. Keep Your Hands Off Azoka and spoke to my heart and soul in regards to my passion for animation and creativity. But on the other hand... I am not even sorry, I love the show to pieces. Interspecies Reviewers was my highlight of 2020. I just couldn't choose, so they're both my favorite. As for Laura, her definite pick was Toilet Bound Hanako-kun for its story and presentation. But then she saw that I chose two and wanted to pick Arte as her other favorite. I honestly told her, okay, yeah, that's fine, but Arte? Wasn't that just a I want to be a painter, but I'm a woman version of Snow White with the red hair? She read my reply and said, you're absolutely right. So she changed it to the Misfit of the Demon King Academy. Now she's talking. That show was fun. You already know my answer. Interspecies Reviewers isn't the best because of the drama that surrounded it. I mean, it only added to the comedy because that made me laugh, but it's genuinely a good comedy. We have three or more different characters are approaching the same brothel and their individual reactions are priceless. I had a good time watching it and I recommend it if you want a good laugh and if you're old enough to watch it. As for Best Comedy Runner-Up, there was only one other title that made me giggle a lot, and that was Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle. I mean, the Demon King and the humans are fighting for the princess, and all she wants is a good night's sleep. Aw, oh, it's so cute and wholesome. Just look at her. She's so cute and a bit terrifying. This is bound to give you a good laugh, so check it out when you can. Uh. They couldn't believe how the fantasy genre just lacked in creativity this year. They were all copy and paste stories and settings that I've seen a million times. Like how many times do we have to go to a medieval setting? How many medieval fantasies do we need Japan? And how many of them were mobile app games? Seriously though, like why do we need this many mobile app game anime when they're not good? And I get that it's easy to make a fantasy setting with medieval aesthetics when you want to include magic, sorcery, and etc. But those restrictions did not stop Doro He Doro. I mean, you would look at this and think it's some dystopian sci-fi or something, but it's a grungy fantasy. There's a man with a lizard for a head looking for a sorcerer who can turn him back to normal while wondering who's the hidden person inside of his mouth and I read that correctly. Their creativity levels in this show are endless and they only add to the wonder of this show. Best fantasy by far for this year. No other show could top it. As for Runner Up, I'm giving it to the one show that was actually a blast to watch. The Misfit Demon King Academy was just fun. It's one thing to have a show about an overpowered character who can do whatever they want, but this guy just went above and beyond with his power. Resurrect someone over and over again just to kill them over and over again? Yes! Turn a dude into a zombie just to teach his brother a lesson? Yes! Just say screw it and toss a castle like you don't give a shit. The dude threw a castle! Case closed, just enjoy the awesome! After 2020, y'all deserve some awesome! Honestly, if I didn't say this technically counts as a sci-fi, I don't even know if I'd even have this category. Or even if I would give this show any kind of award. Ball footy! It counts! The show is about a girl going into a virtual reality game and creating a character with maxed out defense, making her practically indestructible. I know it's in a fantasy setting, but it's treated mostly as a game, and I honestly only had one other show to give best sci-fi to, so it's gonna have to count. Compared to Dora Hey Doro and the Misfit of Demon King Academy, Bofuri is just... cute. That's it. It's funny, and it's delightful to watch, but I just found myself enjoying the other titles compared to this. Maple is cute. 
The idea is funny, and it's a nice show that's fun to watch. I'm giving it best sci-fi because the air was just overwhelmed with fantasy titles, with two of them being a bit better than this in my opinion, but it's still deserving of some praise. And again, she's in a video game leveling up her character. It counts, case closed. The runner-up goes to the only other good sci-fi, and that's Akudama Drive. It's set in a futuristic city where the latest technology can label anyone depending on their background and criminal record. The biggest criminals have endless marks on their records that the city wants to track down and dispose of, but some random person is gathering them all for a bigger mission at hand. Think of it as anime Suicide Squad that's better than the live-action movie, and just have fun with it. Okay, some other titles that could have taken this award honestly fit better in other categories, leaving me with, honestly, two other shows that fit right here. The one that I think deserves it the most, however, is Wave Listen to Me. Minare Koda was living a simple life as a waitress, but she suddenly hears her drunken banter over the radio because a random stranger she was talking to was enthralled with her storytelling. He actually offers her a job as a radio host delivering stories in different and unique ways that would entertain the audience. Audience. This was a sudden invitation, but she just rolls with it. Not sure if some of you will think a show about a woman randomly becoming a radio host while balancing her life is fun to watch, but just watch the first episode and listen to Riho Sugiyama's performance. She owns the microphone with her performance, and it's just wonderful listening to how random she can be. Best Drama Runner-Up was a bit mixed to me, but I gave a runner-up just for the topic alone. Seeing Yesterday for me centers that phase in life after college and mostly focusing on a young man who just couldn't find his place in life unlike his friends. Most of them had no problem graduating into adulthood, but he's struggling to comprehend the pressures of society while debating what it truly means to be an adult, and by whose standards. Some found this a little too whiny, but it definitely related to me. Sad to say there were only a handful of good romances this year, but I honestly had to give this award to Tonikawa Over the Moon for You. Hey look, Truckun actually started a romance. It's a friggin' miracle, Truckun's in a romance. He, he, he's getting sick of sending people to another world. He's just like, you know, screw this. I'm gonna be Cupid. I'm gonna run some people over and it's true love. The end, there's your anime. But seriously, it's a cute show about a couple that just wanted to get married on the spot and the show revolves around them making this spontaneous marriage work. They love each other, they learn how to make it work and you can't help but love them. This romance runner-up is a funny one to me. Science fell in love. A female scientist admits that she has feelings for her partner and wants to know why, scientifically. They take numerous tests to figure out how she knows she's in love and what the known signs of love are. Meanwhile, all of us relate to the third character in the room watching these two like, oh my god, it's just a freaking crush already, stop it! It's a cute and funny romance that I'd recommend. Because Trigger! Am I right? But yeah, a lot of you wanted me to watch it, and I'll admit, it's pretty good. In BNA, humans and beastmen do not get along, and the beastmen find refuge in a city just for them. A female Tanuki beastman travels to the city to find acceptance, only to meet other forms of complications and running into the dark seedy underbellies of the city. It's packed with a lot of action and stellar animation, which is no surprise considering it's from Trigger. I honestly like the idea and style of the show, but thought that the story got a bit muddled towards the end. Still a neat show that I'd recommend. Best action runner-up goes to Darwin's Game. It's basically the deadliest game of tag as a young man gets invited to play a mobile game. Each player is given a different weapon and you're interested to see how they're used in different battles. So this is an interesting action to watch. And if you're wondering how I could award these two shows and not the god of high school, I'll admit, some of those fight scenes are well animated and the character designs are neat, but I seriously feel like webtoon shows have a serious writing problem, but I'll address that later. How come it took this long to get a good heist show? I mean, I'm repeating everyone when I say we haven't had a good heist anime since Lupin the Third. The Great Pretender is brilliant. Not only is it an amazing show with our main characters pulling off insane heists, but the 
effort that was put into the animation and the dub is just fantastic. I honestly thought I was watching the show in the original language first, only for it to change along the way with a diverse cast voicing each character from their respective countries. That's a lot of effort for the dub to pull off, and I commend them for that. Best Thriller Runner-Up could have gone into the mystery category, but with its mixture of mystery while solving an intense crime within a time limit amps it up to a nice thriller. ID Invaded is pretty cool to watch just for the idea and the aesthetic alone, so definitely check it out. It was honestly a tie between these two, but I decided to go with the case files of Jeweler Richard. I mean, I didn't really expect to find a mystery show revolving around two men studying the history behind the jewels they find while attempting to return them to their respective owners. It kind of reminds me of those videos or TV specials featuring someone finding a priceless artifact and doing their research about who owned it and such. If you're into that kind of stuff, then you should definitely check this one out. Our runner-up here is Moriarty, the Patriot. It acts as a prequel to Sherlock Holmes and centers around Moriarty as a young man and solving his own cases. What leads him to becoming the famous rival of Sherlock, though, you'll have to find out and watch. And here we are again with only two choices for this category that were honestly pretty good. But the winner of this category definitely goes to Toilet Bound Hanako. The story is pretty interesting with the girl connecting with a ghost due to a silly mistake she made trying to make Senpai notice her. We've all been there. The idea is pretty cute, but the animation alone is just stellar. It's not only stylized with how the characters are drawn, but the color aesthetics, shading, and theme just make everything pop. You can't help but admire the animation that went into this show, so it's a supernatural eye candy that I'd recommend. And even though the show isn't really done yet, I am already awarding the runner-up spot to Jujutsu Kaisen. Not only is the idea solid, but I actually love all of the characters involved. A young man, passionate for the supernatural, gets involved with them as he swallows a cursed item in order to save his friends, but is now possessed by a deadly demon. It's honestly a pretty good show so far and has a likable protagonist, so check this one out. The very moment I saw the opening to this show, I knew it was going to be amazing. Keep Your Hands Off Azoken is just an amazing show. A young girl finds a passion for animation and becomes a pretty amazing concept and background artist. With the help of a peppy character designer and a blunt producer in the making, these girls work together to make their own anime. Not only do we see the girls work incredibly well together, but we get to explore their imagination as we see their creations come to life. It's also an amazing touch when you notice the sound effects in some of these scenes are the girls making those sounds with their mouths. That's just the cherry on top of this animation sundae. I cannot recommend this enough. And I thought for a moment that there really wasn't any other, well, good school life show. I mean, there's Satan Academy. But I don't like Satan Academy. Then I remembered there was a fishing club anime, and I thought to myself, yeah, that was pretty cute. Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater is a cute show. The characters are likable, and it's just a pleasant show to watch. If you like fishing and just want a nice, calm anime, you cannot go wrong with this one. Here's one that could have been a contender for best comedy, but it's just a nice story that I think fits better here. Kakushi Goto is about a manga artist hiding the fact that he is a manga artist from his daughter because he's mostly famous for making, well, raunchy stories. He didn't want her friends to tease her nor lose her respect, so he does his best to look after his daughter while waiting until she's old enough to learn the truth about him. It's a wholesome show full of hilarious moments, and it was a sweet delight to watch. As a best slice of life runner-up... Yeah, you're seeing this right. I went into Uzaki-chan once to hang out thinking it was a random comedy with perverse humor, but was actually treated to a nice show of a girl trying to reach out to her friend while making sure he didn't waste away his college days alone. It's harmless fun full of funny and sweet moments, so definitely check it out. I almost took this category out. The majority of sports anime this year were boring. But if I had to choose something for this category... Um... Okay, at least the gymnast one was a little different. 
In Taizo Samurai, a dad is being pressured to retire since he's not performing well, but after a random meeting with a ninja, who happens to be a fan of his, he decides to give his athletic career one more shot. Even though I think the ninja is a bit annoying, I think this is a cute show. If anything, it was one of the only sports shows that did something different compared to the other… what? three sports shows that came out in 2020. So out of the three remaining ones, which one gets the runner-up spot? Okay, we're just gonna give it to Sports Climbing Girls, because I've never seen any other rock climbing anime, so there you go. Enjoy. Okay, you sold me on this. My next life as a villainess is genuinely a brilliant harem. A young woman is reborn as the villain of a dating simulator she used to play in her first life. She knows that if she doesn't do anything, she'll be doomed to die or to be banished. So she works hard to give herself a happy ending. A really neat idea that I'm honestly impressed with, so check it out if you want to watch a good harem. Speaking of interesting ideas, we have Rent-A-Girlfriend as runner-up. It was honestly close between these two shows as I think this one had a neat idea too. A young man gets extremely lonely after a recent breakup and tries a service that allows him to date a girl of his choice for one day. As a customer service employee myself, I found Chizuru's personality way too relatable. Gotta put on the smile for the customers every day, guys. Oh my god, my cheeks are killing me. The moral argument is there over whether or not renting a girlfriend is acceptable or not, and this did spark a discussion online. I say it's an interesting topic to explore and it's full of charming characters. Except Mommy. She's a meanie. Okay, so I'm putting these two categories together because honestly, no one can beat The Great Pretender. It wins both categories. The opening starts you off in a similar style to Cowboy Bebop, and y'all know how much I love Bebop. With its striking jazz number and stylistic animation, you know you're in for something incredible when you see this opening sequence. As for its ending, I mean, it's Freddie Mercury singing The Great Pretender, and it's accompanied by singing cats. End of discussion, it wins in a landslide. As for the runner-ups for each category, I had to choose Keep Your Hands Off Aizouken for opening and Jujutsu Kaisen for ending. Aizouken's song is extremely catchy, but the animation for each girl gets you invested immediately. You knew by just looking at the visuals that this was going to be different. <laughs> As for Jujutsu Kaisen, if the animation style doesn't sell you alone, the catchy song the characters are dancing to definitely will. Zoken and Jujutsu were both great contenders in this category, but they still couldn't compete with the Great Pretender. Freddie Mercury and Singing Cats. What more do you want? <laughs> And like every year, we can never declare what the best songs are as everyone's taste in music is completely subjective. So here's what we consider to be our favorites of the year. Laura Pavlovic's choice for best song goes to Night Running from Brand New Animal. thought my choice was going to be Easy Breezy from Aizouken, because it actually is a pretty cool song that you just want to dance to. But then I watched The Millionaire Detective and just fell in love with the ending theme. Welcome, my friend from The Millionaire Detective is definitely my favorite song of the year. I mean, 
be three win by default. You've got two passionate artists with a dream that they're not even sure can come true, but their future producer puts her foot down and helps them make their dream a reality. Midori, Sayaka, and Tsubame from Keep Your Hands Off Azoken make a remarkable team because they are amazing friends. And as for the runner-up... <clears throat> I'm not even kidding. Stunk and Zell go on numerous adventures together just so they can take their earnings and have fun at numerous brothels. And when they meet Krim, they invite him along for the ride too and form an unexpected friendship with him. A human, an elf, and an angel will travel the globe to tackle numerous obstacles and get laid along the way. <laughs> I love this show. There are honestly three girls that came to my mind for this category, but I just had to pick Sayaka Kanamori from Keep Your Hands Off Aizoken. She's that intelligent and down-to-earth girl that Midori and Tsubame needed. She's in it for the money and is not one to lose to negotiations. There's thinking about it, and then there's finding a way to do it. Sayaka hears what her friends want, thinks of what's in it for her, and just makes it all happen through her attitude and deals. Definitely a great choice for this category. Best female runner-up for me has to go to Minare Koda from Wave Listen to Me. I was honestly thinking of Chizuru Ichinose from Rent a Girlfriend for this category because she's honestly a great character, but I'm not really hearing enough about Minare Koda. She started the struggle in life with her own personal dramas and having a hard time dealing with her job, but when a new opportunity just appears out of nowhere for her to try, she just rolls with it. I mean, it's just random for her to suddenly become a radio host just out of the blue, and the gig itself is pretty unusual for anyone to do. But like I said before, she just rolls with it and gives the most amusing performance for her viewers to listen to. At least watch the first episode to see what I mean. Not the easiest category this year, as there really wasn't a male lead that truly stood out to me. Some were considered fun and okay, while others could have been replaced with Wonder Bread and it wouldn't change a damn thing. So I'm giving this to the one character who surprised me, and that was Yuji Itadori from Jujutsu Kaisen. I found myself actually liking a recent shonen protagonist, and that is saying a lot. He's just a more chilled out character with a genuine soul and a drive to seek out his interests no matter if it looks strange to others. He's just a positive and lovable character to lead this kind of show, and I genuinely appreciate that. As for the runner-up, I'm giving it to the dad who stole my heart, Kakushi Goto from... Well, Kakushi Goto. He's trying real hard to give his daughter a normal life while fearing his actual occupation will ruin her reputation as well as their relationship. The lengths he goes through just to do his best for his daughter is hilarious and wholesome to witness, so he definitely deserves this spot. Keep your hands off Azoken is just a giant love letter to animation and it needs to win this category. Not only for its freestyle form of animation and for the unique way the characters express themselves, but seeing these girls experience their vision through their own art is just an ingenious touch. It's expressive, it's unique, it's charming, and it's one of a kind. Best animation runner-up goes to Toilet Bound Hanako-kun. Just the aesthetics alone make this show unforgettable. With how the characters are drawn and colored and striking shades, I couldn't help but love this unique style. I wasn't sure how to address this one since most of the sequels have been pretty good this year. Some did their job well, while others are just... Um, meh? Which one can I honestly give this award to? Well, if anything, ReZero Season 2 was able to pull off many aspects missing from Season 1, while giving us an even darker season than before. I mean, it definitely did its job to get my attention this year, so it's a winner in my book. The runner-ups are honestly a tie between Attack on Titan and Fruits Basket. Even though Attack on Titan isn't done just yet, it's doing a stellar job so far finishing up the franchise. And as for Fruits Baskets, we're just grateful to see more from the manga come to life in the best way possible. So yeah, they both deserve the runner-up spot. But here I am also giving a shout out to Meta Runner Season 2. Okay, so... 
I asked a lot of you on Twitter if I had to include Chinese anime this year, since China was really prominent this year for anime. Like, they made a ton of anime for 2020. The majority of you basically said it does count, but that would also mean I would have to include other forms of shows that were considered anime, even if they weren't made by Japanese studios and directors. So, long story short, if I have to watch and talk about Chinese anime, I'm also gonna talk about Aussie anime. But I had to restrain myself from actually giving this an award, since, um, I voiced one of the characters. Tari? Tari! But putting my bias aside, Meta Runner is just an amazing show that I want more people to check out. The second season went above and beyond with its animation changes and was ramping up the story even better than season one. It's an amazing show that I truly feel blessed to be a part of, and I hope you get to check it out. I mean, it's free to watch on YouTube, so go. Go watch it. <laughs> make a category for historical fiction since this was the only one that would fit that category, but I at least wanted to award this show with something. Apare Ranman is basically Wacky Races the anime. Like this random kid and a dude he just met accidentally travel from Japan to America and randomly decide to make a vehicle for this big race that's taking place there. It's honestly a cute and likable show that not many people are talking about, so be sure to check it out. And speaking of Chinese anime, hopefully I can pronounce this correctly, we have Tianguan Chi Fu as most underrated runner-up. The majority of Chinese anime this year didn't really grab my attention with their story. Animation-wise, they were actually pretty good. Tianguan Chi Fu, however, was the best one out of all of them. The visuals are just stunning, and the story is pretty interesting. It was honestly a contender for best fantasy, but again... There was a lot of fantasy last year, but if you were ever interested in Chinese anime, I'd say start with this one first. Okay, so take Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, but replace Toru with this weird looking dinosaur, and you have your winner for Weirdest Anime of 2020. Gal and Dinosaur takes the idea of a drunken character coming home with a strange creature and just gets weird with it. Weird in different aspects, actually, as the dinosaur not only acts weird, but also the visuals tend to vary throughout the episode. It even goes live action sometimes while also making things even weirder. Definitely a bizarre trip you should at least see once. As for runner-up, uh, this one kind of hurt my brain. The actual plot centers around women running the world and banning all wars and violence. But if men decide to get aggressive and want to fight, they'd have to settle their battles by engaging in... And I'm not kidding here! Epic rap battles! I honestly don't hate the idea of fighting via rap battles, but what does having the matriarchy banning war have to do with any of this? There's no need to give us a complicated reason as to why war is banned, and that's why we're resorting to this. Just give us pretty boys and epic rap battles, and we're gonna be fine. There's no need to complicate this silly idea. <laughs> no, not Titan's Pride. I wanted this to work. How did they mess it up so bad? I am so disappointed. As someone who actually read the manga, you have your hobbies, I have mine. The story was butchered in this adaptation. I almost considered this to be part of the worst anime of 2020, considering how rushed and empty the story was compared to the manga. Any form of chemistry this couple had was non-existent. I could go on and on over how rushed and uneventful this adaptation felt, but I think you get the point. I'm heartbroken. I love the story and this anime was sad. As for the runner-up, Hatena Illusion was just sad. I mean, I love the idea of a phantom thief family starring the daughter of the family trying her best to be just as good as her parents. The problem is, though, she's not only an unlikable character who hates all kinds of men, but is also incredibly stupid. This idea sounded promising, but it ended up being a giant waste of time. And brain cells. This thing was stupid. Thank you. 
COVID must have really done a number on anime films since there really weren't any original movies that were released in 2020, just ones that were based off of existing anime shows. So with all of that said, we're gonna give this to the one movie that kept breaking box office records all throughout Japan, Demon Slayer. Nothing much to add other than it's a beautifully made movie with top-notch animation yet again from this franchise. If you're a huge Demon Slayer fan, you're definitely gonna like this movie. As for runner-up, I'm giving it to Violet Evergarden. And just when I thought I couldn't cry anymore, oh, it keeps breaking my heart and it's beautiful. Alright, so I've bitched enough over how bad 2020 was, and you're probably wondering what the worst ones are if the year was truly disappointing. Well, let me say, I had to increase the number of worst anime to 5. Yeah, I just couldn't keep it down to 3, so let's just get into this. Webtoons! It started off a bit complicated. The majority tend to agree that Tower of God was... decent. Anything else that came from Webtoons afterwards just kept getting worse. I, for one, didn't really like any of the webtoon titles since there was so much exposition and talking that I found myself getting annoyed. Tower of Gods was okay enough, the god of high school has decent action, but a weak story. But the one that just grinded my gears the most and takes the place at number 5 is Noblesse. Noblesse? Noblesse? You know what? I don't care. Expositions! Expositions everywhere! The writing for this series is not only all over the place, but it's terrible. There were certain elements that felt awkward and out of place that ultimately spoiled the story for me. Not to mention, it tries to present a decent moral in regards to nobility and personal value, but the message gets muddled along the way, with how the characters treat their opponents. Not going to spoil anything, but this adaptation just felt extremely messy and irritating to watch. So the creators of Yami Shibai decided to make a spin-off series called Ninja Collection. Sounds interesting enough. The problem is though, it's honestly lackluster in story and especially in presentation. Yami Shibai can get away with its animation mainly due to how the presentation adds to the horror element of the series. The same cannot be said for a generic modern day ninja show that comes off like any other shonen anime. So you not only have a lame shonen with nothing special added to the show, but it's accompanied by poor animation that was ripped from any sort of charm Yami Shibai had. It's such a shame to see the franchise go in that direction. The anime I tried asking in Dogeza is just awkward and uncomfortable. The idea itself sounded pretty funny. It's about a desperate dude using any means of negotiations to ask a girl to do something naughty. The girls get all blushy, but the more he begs, the more likely they are to do it. The problem is, though, is listening to the guy use guilt trip methods to convince the girls. As in, he claims he'll literally hurt himself if he can't see their boobs or something. This idea would have been fine if the main guy went above and beyond to make a fool of himself in order to convince these ladies to do this one little naughty act. But guilting them by threatening self-harm just hit a low blow for me, so this whole story just left a bad taste in my mouth. Okay, so the idea of Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time could have worked out fine. A soldier proving his worth to his beloved, trying to convince her dad for her hand in marriage, and being chased around by bachelorettes desperate to have his babies is fine. The only thing that ruined the idea, however, is the fact that every character in this anime is awful. The ladies who want to get with Peter are ruthless and horrible. Peter's fiance is dumber than a bag of bricks, and it gets annoying with how sheltered she is. Her father is supposed to be the villain, but you can't blame his actions when it comes to Peter himself. Peter is supposed to be the sympathetic hero trying to be loyal to his fiance while avoiding all the ladies who want him. The comedy would have been fine if he's just forced into these different situations and has to find a way out in order to be loyal and faithful. But in episode one, he doesn't last long at all. The ogre sisters just gang up on him in a hotel and he gives in. You can't feel any sympathy towards a character who didn't even try to resist. A potentially good idea that was ruined by its poor characters.
don't even care if I mispronounce the title of this show because I don't care enough about this show to try. Gibiate, Gibiate, who cares? It just sounded weird but interesting. The majority of the world is wiped out due to a virus that's mutating humans into bug-like mutants. This is basically the Cronenberg episode of Rick and Morty. Then out of nowhere, a ninja and a samurai travel to the future and are rescued by a group of researchers trying their best to find a cure to the virus. The idea sounds interesting, but boy does it flop. Not only does the story get phenomenally boring and nonsensical, but the animation is just terrible. I couldn't believe how bad this show was, and it just kept getting worse the longer I looked at it. Depending on who you are, this could be considered as a so bad it's funny kind of show, where you can just sit back and laugh over how bad this show really is. For its lazy presentation, horrible CGI, and a ridiculous story that kept getting worse towards the end, there's no doubt that Gibiate Gibiate Who Cares is the worst anime of 2020. Even if I say 2020 was mostly mediocre, I'm happy to say there were a few gems that shine amongst all of them. So let's take a look at our choices for the best anime of 2020. I knew four titles that had definite spots on this list, but wasn't really sure what to put for number five. There were a few good titles here and there that could have been placed here, but I found myself debating over two of them. I just couldn't choose over which one deserved it more, so screw it. It's a tie. Waves listened to me and Kakushi Goto surprised me. I honestly didn't expect to be this interested in either show, but the characters and presentation grabbed my attention. If you want an interesting drama of a woman accepting a random job as a radio host while accompanied by some seriously good acting, you should check out Waves Listen to Me. And if you want a lighthearted comedy of a father doing his best to look out for his daughter while hiding the fact that he's a manga artist for a perverted series, check out Kakushi Goto. And they say creativity is dead. There was no excuse for 2020 to be overloaded with generic fantasy titles when Doro Hei Doro exists. It takes the elements of fantasy and magic, but placing them in grungy settings with edgy character designs and animation. I'm praising this alone just for how creative it is, and I hope to see more shows like this. It's engaging with its animation, story, and imagination. A definite highlight for 2020. Well, you can't say I didn't try. Haters are gonna hate, but 2020 was defined by this show. But putting controversies aside, Interspecies Reviewers is on this list because of how it approaches the topic of sex. Shows that center around this topic treat it like it's taboo and dirty. This show, however, just makes it look fun and harmless. As long as the party members involved give their full consent and watch over their health, then there's no harm in what they're doing. It's known as a fun hentai sitcom because it honestly is, but we shouldn't downgrade a show just because sex is involved. They're being responsible and having the time of their lives, so what's the problem? It's a funny show, exploring the topic of sex in a fun way, and it's full of likable characters. As much as I wanted to declare this as THE best anime of 2020, there were honestly two shows that I didn't have the heart to place lower than this. I did not expect this show to be this good. Like, after watching episode 1, I knew The Great Pretender was going to be amazing. It's not just the incredible heist our characters pull off that makes it worthwhile, it's the love and care you can see and feel when you watch where our characters are going. They travel all around the world, and it's pulled off brilliantly by the animators and by the ADR directors. I've never been this impressed with a dub like this since probably Bakano. Every actor was perfect for each character and setting. You can just tell how much hard work and effort went into making this show, and I just can't recommend this incredible show enough. And yet, I just felt that there was one other show that was just a bit better. I'm sure you know the answer by now. With how many awards I've given them so far, and with how much I adore animation, Keep Your Hands Off Azoken just had to take the crown. The story alone is inspirational and accompanied by amazing characters with unique personalities. The animation is stunning and stylistic, which is all thanks to its remarkable director, Masaaki Yuasa, the same genius behind Devilman Crybaby and Ping Pong. This was his love letter to animation, while highlighting how stressful it can truly be to make anime 
way at all. Seeing this only makes you appreciate the animators more for how hard they work towards creating memorable shows that we all cherish throughout our lives. It's a brilliant show full of heart and soul and led by three amazingly unique girls who help each other achieve the impossible. For its amazing story, character, and animation, we believe that Keep Your Hands Off Aizoken is the true best anime of 2020. Even though I'll still say it's interspecies reviewers because good memes never die. Okay, so this is a long video, so I'll keep this one short. I am so tired right now, my voice is almost gone. If you agree with this video or not, just leave your comments down below telling me which anime you thought was the best of 2020. This whole year was hectic for all sorts of reasons, but at least we had some of these titles to help us get by. Also, be sure to tell me which anime you're looking forward to in 2021. Hopefully, we won't get as many fantasies as we did last year, but that might be wishful thinking on my end. I like to get Give a huge thank you to Laura Pavlovic for helping me with the anime awards again, and to my Patreon supporters for keeping this channel alive and thriving. You're all too kind and generous to me, and I honestly cannot thank you enough. Thank you everyone for watching this video. More awesome videos will be on the way, so stay tuned to Anime America. Oh my god, I think I've been recording for an hour. Oh.